Did you know the flu virus can live on a workplace surface for up to 48 hours? Lysol Pro Solutions cold and flu portfolio quickly kills flu, RSV, and COVID-19 viruses when used as directed. Stock up. It's Monday. It's December 4th. And the word of the day is poppycock, a Dutch word that means the excrement of a doll. Used in a sentence, poppycock is the etymological root that gave us cacophony, cacography, bad handwriting, and cucking stool, a torture device used to punish women for being too scoldy. Huh. Terrifying. Yeah, and that is certainly the only cucking I'm aware of, Heath. You should use that word more. It'd be I'm sorry, fun. We just, oh, we're just going to breeze by the fact that Dutch dolls used to shit so much they needed a name for it? Okay. <laughs> I am you. I thought that would get a response. <laughs> I'm Eli Bosnick. I'm Heath Enright, and broadcasting delayed from America's Far Center, we are the Skeptocrats. On this week's episode, Henry Kissinger kills one last non-combatant. <laughs> Apple will take ownership of all your photos at midnight. And after a second test, Donald Trump is now a double stable double genius. Oh, sure. But first, the rest of the intro music. Joining me for headlines tonight are my fellow skeptic rats, no illusions, and Eli Bosnick. Gentlemen, we have an interesting pre-headline. The U.S. representative for New York's third congressional district oh, is shit. nobody. Uh -huh. There's not one. So <laughs> that's fun. Yeah. I, I weep for the headlines lost, but it is for the best. So that's Yeah. Cool. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, I feel like Long Island has proven they don't deserve a representative at they this do point. Not. I, I think they should take the time to think about what they've done <laughs> and they can have a representative in uh, 2032, that's, something no, like that's that. Fair. You lost him at think. It's fine. In our lead story tonight. The Joe Biden campaign team continued with their principal strategy of letting Donald Trump say things and eating popcorn. Mm -hmm. It seems to be working pretty well, although I'm sure it gets boring for some of the team. Like, I'm guessing they have some ambitious young staffers who want to go hard in the paint with eloquent rhetoric and poetic oratory about important policy initiatives. And they get all excited about a thing they wrote. But then some grizzled old veteran is like, hey, shut the fuck up and repost whatever Trump said just now. I don't even know what he said just now. What does it say on the whiteboard? What's the literal only thing it says on the whiteboard? And the kid's like, oh, it says shut the fuck up and repost whatever Trump said. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. That's the dynamic there. Well, that's definitely going to remain the policy this week after Trump announced the latest component of his non-platform. And that's going to be getting rid of Obamacare and therefore taking away health coverage from about 40 million Americans. Yeah. Uh, to be fair, if all 40 million of those people die and are Democrats, that would be all the votes he's lost his last two yeah, elections right. yeah, by. No, he'd, he'd squeak in. He's like a one-hit wonder from like 25 years ago, slowly realizing his new stuff isn't doing it for the crowd at the Sheboygan Cranberry Festival or whatever. He has to go back to the yeah, so old favorites. Here's the announcement from Trump. He went on Truth Social, it's doing great over there, and he posted, quote, the cost of Obamacare is out of control, plus it's not good health care. <laughs> so, he seems to think that like 40 million people are all being treated by a person named Dr. Obamacare, <laughs> I guess. I don't know. Right, yeah, must he, be. He continued, I'm seriously looking at alternatives. We had a couple of Republican senators who campaigned for six years against it and then raised their hands not to terminate it. It was a low point for the Republican Party, but we should never give up, end quote. And that last thing was a reference to the very embarrassing womp womp for Donald Trump when John McCain dragged his swollen fucking cancer brain onto the Senate floor and did a good thing in defiance of Trump before dying. Oh, man, we should have lowered him into lava while the thumb was down. It would have been so awesome. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't have that much time. Oh, God, I love this statement, though. He's basically saying, like, it was a humiliating failure last time we did it. So let's do it again. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yes. <laughs> and here's how Trump got there. He made the post along with an image of an op-ed he found in the Wall Street Journal. Not a great start. So I'm guessing he printed that out on physical paper and had somebody read it aloud to him. But he's an idiot, so he didn't even understand the most basic general idea of the piece. 
And in fairness, the author of the op-ed didn't really understand that much either. The title is Elizabeth Warren's Obamacare Epiphany. And it's claiming that even communist Liz Warren wants to get rid of the ACA. And that's based on a letter she wrote, along with Republican Senator Mike Braun, also a communist, I guess. Mm, And the letter was telling the Department of Health and Human Services that big insurance companies are finding loopholes in the law, which is true. And that's why we need to fix the loopholes. That's the point of the letter. But Trump landed on get rid of whatever the Obama thing is and replace it with my secret plan that I've been two weeks away from unveiling (laughs) since 2015. I will eventually have it. Right. Yeah. No, the old roof can't leak if we get rid of the roof strategy. Good. Good call. (laughs) Also known as landlord strategy. (laughs) It's a coincidence. (laughs) So here's a little extra context about why Trump's plan is incredibly stupid and therefore good news to some extent. First of all, in the 2018 midterms, Democrats all over the country won elections by campaigning against Republicans who wanted to scrap the ACA. And support for the law continues growing. About 50% of the country had a favorable view in 2018, and now it's up to about 60%. And those numbers would be much higher if the question was, which do you like better, the ACA or Trump's secret mystery box of pills or whatever the fuck he's working on? Right. Okay, sorry, Heath, I, not to correct you on air, but that's a bad example because you know Donald Trump has some bomb ass mystery pills. <laughs> the, the, the point is, you won't get those. You're poor. You're right. just going to die. <laughs> no, you'll get the ones he'd sell. Yeah. It just it blows me away, though, that 40% of this country is sticking to their, I'm fucking sick of having all this affordable health care position, though. <laughs> Terrifying the stupidity. And speaking of Donald Trump being an idiot. He recently referred to Barack Obama as the sitting president of the United States. (laughs) To me too, Donald. Me too. (laughs) As a follow-up, Trump could have easily just said, yeah, messed up. It's very easy to confuse Barack Hussein Obama and Joseph Robinette Biden. Sure. But instead, Trump claimed that he called Obama the sitting president sarcastically. What? Which is even dumber, assuming he's not lying. He's lying. But either way, Trump also reported another perfect score on a cognitive test. He said, quote, I know both names very well. Never mix them up. Also, I just took a cognitive. Yeah, (laughs) absolutely. Already insane. He added, I just took a cognitive test as part of my physical exam, which he capitalized and aced it. Also aced in parentheses, a perfect score. One taken while in the White House, end quote. (laughs) And just a reminder, he got that original so-called perfect score (laughs) out of cognitive test by hearing the words person, woman, man, camera, TV, and then repeating those (laughs) words back to a doctor successfully. To be clear, that test literally has you point out the different parts of a horse, (laughs) right? It is usually used to decide which wing of the hospital you need to go to, not which branch of the (laughs) government you run. Right. No, yeah, to be clear, he's mistaking a test for whether you retain the ability to think with an intelligence test. Sure is. Again, which which honestly should retroactively negate his perfect score on the horse parts test, really. Yeah. Also, he was like, horse TV. Horses have TV. I don't think he passed that. I don't think he passed but the horse parts thing. We're taking it on his word, and he's never said a true thing. So, yeah. Uh-huh. yeah. <laughs> so, obviously, if you're going to scrap a giant piece of legislation that defines the healthcare system, you're going to need an alternative idea. But when I say obvious, I mean obvious to people who's... <laughs> Cognitive ability goes beyond person, woman, man, camera, horse TV Obviously, or yeah, no, that's important. So when Trump's campaign team saw the post he made about getting rid of Obamacare, they had no idea it was coming and they all panicked. According to a member of the team who spoke with the New York Times, they went to Trump and said, approximate quote, dude, what the fuck are you doing? We have absolutely no plan for how to do health care if you get rid of that. We have no plan, period. The whiteboard for the platform, look at it. It just says juice question mark what is that i don't even know what that is i want juice tyler it's pretty simple i, really okay. so, I figured but still oh God. what was really fun was listening to the republican senators after this shit trying to comment on it without saying fucking idiot that was great yeah. that was fun. <laughs> so bottom line the aca it's a nice little step in the right direction but the clear answer is universal health care 
And the best path to that definitely doesn't involve 40 million people losing their insurance and suffering potentially financial ruin and death, despite what accelerationist imbeciles want to tell you. <laughs> and on that note, I get angry. Uh, we're going to take a quick break for a word from our sponsor, BetterHelp. This show is sponsored by BetterHelp. Uh, rubber? <laughs> no way. I bite right through that. Okay. Yeah. Steel? Uh, then the teeth crack, Heath. Teeth crack, sure. Yeah. Hey, guys. What are you doing? We're trying to find a proper teeth gritting mouth guard for Eli for the holidays, but it's really tricky. Yeah, let me try this. Vaccines use... Yeah, no. See, I bit right through this one. I didn't even make it through the sentence. See what we're talking about? Look, guys, if you're dealing with holiday family stress, why not try therapy? Therapy for holiday stress? That's right. And if you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapists at any time for no additional charge. Wow, so I can do therapy on my schedule from anywhere? That's right. In the season of giving, give yourself what you need with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash Skeptocrat today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P, dot com slash skeptocrat all right guys thanks hey d don't you have a dental appointment today Nah, he canceled it why uh, my aunt edna is in town smart mm -hmm. yeah and we're back next up in headlines in kissinger ass goodbye news nice. diplomat Statesman and napalm enthusiast Henry Kissinger died this week. And since the three of us are apparently the only liberals left who can criticize a Jewish person who does war crimes without descending into frothing anti-Semitism, <laughs> we're going to talk about it. He looks like Ben Stein tried to kill Kennedy all the time. Uh, Heath, what did I just say? But not because of a globalist conspiracy. Oh, okay, just, slightly I'm better. I'll allow it. Thing. Because Thank he you. does look like that. He yeah, he really you does. know, he started all the wars. Shit. Yeah, no, nope. ah. sorry, I heard it. I heard it no. as soon as it came out of my mouth. He was involved in a lot of. He did he start was, a lot right? of fucking war. Not because he's Jewish. That's just no, a coincidence. No, just... <laughs> is like a real thing that you have to consider and be like, here's a couple wars he didn't start, and I have edge cases. <laughs> so, for those of you who are unfamiliar, if you've ever thought to yourself. I don't understand why we, as the wealthiest country in the world, don't do more to feed the poor or maintain peace and increase human thriving on the planet we all share. Henry Kissinger, as we were just saying, is actually a pretty good answer to that question. Yeah, right? yeah. As a diplomat and statesman, he introduced a approach to U.S. policy that many call realpolitik, but probably they call it that because genocidal mania doesn't roll off the tongue in yeah. quite the same yeah. way. <laughs> right, yeah. And realpolitik might seem like a good idea when you just define it as being practical. Good good for your team, anyway. But if you get into specifics with Kissinger, you're like presenting Henry Kissinger with a trolley dilemma, and before you even show him the picture of the tracks, he's like, carpet bomb Cambodia and Laos right now, do it. <laughs> right, yeah, no, realpolitik, as often as not, ends up being a post hoc, those people we napalmed were eventually going to die anyway level just of uh, justification. He sure does. But Eli, you ask, what did he actually do? Well, let's take a peek at Kissinger's resume. First and probably foremost, he expanded the U.S.'s role in the Vietnam War. And by expanded, I mean d did a war crime, as he was largely responsible for the secret bombing campaigns in Cambodia and Laos. Uh, Heath wasn't exaggerating, by the way. And yes, you heard that right. They were secret bombing campaigns which killed so many civilians and so destabilized the region that it led to the rise of the Khmer fucking Rouge. And if you don't know who that is, please do not look it up. Yeah, Kissinger got a Nobel Peace Prize in 1973, but he should have got a Killing Fields Medal, too. <laughs> Terrifying. <laughs> Apparently, you can negotiate the armistice to end the war crimes that you did, and that counts for a Nobel, yeah. at least yeah. in 1973. Great. Preventing crimes through refraining from them, yeah. By the way, Killing Fields Medal is one of your top 10 all-time genocide puns, Heath. I, I yep, fantastic. Well, up, we're up there. I that. I'm glad that we rank them. And I know what you're thinking, podcast listener. Eli, is it really fair for you to engage in all this name-calling over one little dictatorship? 
Well, yes, it is. But luckily, Henry wasn't just supportive of one dictatorship. And nope. this is just from a quick scan of his Wikipedia controversy section. He was responsible for seven dictatorships. He was 0 for 7 on homicidal <laughs> dictators. Mm-hmm. Or 7 for 7, if well. you think about <laughs> That's it. That's true, yeah. No, they, you phrase if you real politic, yeah, he was... Like, yeah. <laughs> now, maybe you're wondering, podcast listener, okay, but what good did he do? Well, until this week, as press outlets all over the world desperately tried to describe his legacy as mixed and controversial, I'd never actually seen anyone try to do that. So I perused a few obits and even asked ChatGPT about his accomplishments, and I shit you not, ChatGPT's first answer about a good thing Henry Kissinger did was the peace agreements he established in the Middle East in 1973. And, um... I don't know if you've checked lately, but those peace agreements are going awesome. Yeah, no, they absolutely nailed it. So all that peace that we've had. Well, yeah, no, look, gun to my head. I got to say something nice about this guy. I I feel like the best I could do is like, well, you inspired that Grim Reaper at the Claw Machine meme. That was fun. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. (laughs) Pharaoh from Exodus had better agreements with Israel than this guy. It sure did. (laughs) Really bad. Sure did. Yeah. So, uh, so long, Henry Kissinger. I might not have found anything good to say about you, but your death has done one good thing. We all know that the maximum restraining order the devil can have against someone is 100 years. So that's something, (laughs) at least, everybody. (laughs) Fair. And in How You Like Them Apples news. In retrospect, the generation that fully bought into the idea that Pop Rocks and Coke were a formula for fatal gastric explosions never should have been trusted with social media to begin with. And we were reminded of that yet again when thousands upon thousands of naive social media denizens, including plenty of self-identified skeptics that really should have known better, jumped aboard a general panic last weekend over the dangers of Apple's new name drop feature. Specifically, a number of posts originating from police departments around the country warned that the new feature would risk, quote, inadvertent sharing of personal information, end quote, despite the danger of that being literally zero. Okay, hackers are more likely to steal your contact info by just talking to you in person until you give them information. Yes. Mm -hmm. Guys, the parents we made fun of for posting that Facebook can't steal our pictures at midnight didn't even die before we became them. That was fast, <laughs> right? everybody. It was fast. Oh, so, look, I am not an Apple user. Boo! And, and in my experience, Apple users are the fucking worst. Uh, non-present company excluded. Really wish I had said that <laughs> boo before I read the second half of your sentence. <laughs> But the the point is that I see the flaws with Apple software as a bit of a come up and to an elitist group that pretends Apple or the entire panoply of other technology companies is a binary choice. The board game makes a cell phone. It's a panoply. It's a totally different thing. So th- that being said, it's not even Apple. The, the idea that genders. Apple, a company that is miles ahead of its competitors in terms of protecting its users' data, added a new feature that would allow your personal information to leak out of your phone like ink from a cheap pen is fucking nuts. It's exactly the kind of thing that should give everyone pause before they share a meme from a source as generally disreputable as their local police department. Okay, if you're worried about privacy violations of your personal information... Law enforcement is a great source of that knowledge, I guess, yeah, but they're not going to tell you the real answer. They're yeah. going to do some of right. that. And I have to admit that there was something pretty ironic about people posting about data security on Facebook. Right. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> so in case it's not clear from the framing so far, name drop does not allow nefarious wandering hackers to surreptitiously obtain your contact info. To use the feature, the phones have to be inches apart. They have to be unlocked for a significant period of time. You, you have to answer multiple user prompts to verify that you do want to share data and what data you want to share. Like it's, it's hard to see how that leads to inadvertent data sharing outside of like movie version hypnosis right and like i mean honestly it's, it's significantly safer than say putting that same information in an email or a text or writing it down on a piece of paper or saying it aloud in a public place which is why it matters that we push back about this kind of hysteria okay if a hacker finds a way to walk right next to you an inch away from your hip the whole time for several minutes and press buttons inside your pocket without you realizing <laughs> it. They deserve to steal your contact yes. list. And then profit, not at all. How does, what is that? That's nothing. Like, is your bank account one of your contacts? What are you doing? And, and look, 
misinformation matters. N- not only does sharing this kind of shit push people towards riskier alternatives, but it also feeds into several dangerous anti-technology narratives. It-, it distracts people from real concerns. It erodes trust in random directions. It makes people think that their local police department is looking out for their best interests. But perhaps more than anything, it makes people think of hackers and identity thieves as these uber-sophisticated criminal masterminds wandering around with bespoke electronics that soak up iPhone data and credit card information when the real dangers they face are from the fact that they wrote their password on a post-it note that's visible in their office selfies. (laughs) Right. Yeah. Maybe rather than trying to fit your phone into a Faraday cage in your pocket, explain to your grandma that the FBI doesn't take payment in Google Play gift cards. Right. That would do. Yeah. So by all means, use name drop. And while you're at it, by the way, use public Wi-Fi and airport phone chargers too. also victims of random collective delirium. Uh, But what you shouldn't do is share shit online from sources as dubious as Cletus down at the sheriff's office without at least Googling <laughs> is X true before you do. And since we're on the subject of safe and effective ways to share photos with your friends anyway, I guess it's the perfect time to pause and tell you about this week's other sponsor, Aura Frames. Come on, dude, let me out. Not till Christmas, I told you. Dude, come on. Hey, Eli, have you seen Heath? I sure have. I boxed him up and I'm giving him to his mom for Christmas. No, thank God you're here. Let me out, please. Okay, I'll bite. Eli, why are you boxing Heath up and sending him to his mom? Can we discuss it when I'm out of the box, please? Because, Noah, she loves him. And there's nothing she'd love more than to see him. Well... Why don't you just send her an aura frame? What's an aura frame? Really, Heath, from inside a box? Still counts. That counts. I'm putting it on the board. Wirecutter called it the best digital photo frame, and it's easy to see why. It takes no time to set up and get connected, and then you can add perfect photos and videos yourself from the app. It just connects to your photo library, and you can click the ones you want. Couldn't be easier. Wow, that does sound easy. It is. You can even set it up and add your photos so the frame works right out of the box. That's why I, Noah Illusions, personally endorse Aura Frames as a product. All right, Noah, I'm sold. Where do I sign up? Give the perfect gift this holiday season by visiting AuraFrames.com and get $30 off the best-selling frames with code SKEPTOCRAT. These frames sell out quickly, though, so get yours before they're gone. That's A-U-R-A Frames.com, and the promo code is SKEPTOCRAT. Terms and conditions apply. Thank you. To that. Thank you, Heath. Uh, Should we... Should we let him out of the box now? Uh, in a minute. Kind of mad about the point. You want to get lunch? I can eat. You guys put my point on the board? Guys. Guys, did you put... You know what? I'm actually fine in here. This is fine. And we're back. Next up in headlines, we have a very important story about a serious geopolitical issue that really needs to be addressed between global pandemics and nuclear proliferation and the destruction of the planet's ecosystem with carbon emissions. It's hard to find the bandwidth to process another catastrophic fear. That being said, if I have to hear the crunching noise of somebody eating chips in my headphones one more goddamn (laughs) time, (laughs) I'm going to do a terrorism. This happens on the phone. It happens on Every single episode with Eli ever, ever, ever. (laughs) And most importantly, it happens on your headset while you're playing 18 hours of Rocket League and also eating chips the whole time yourself. And it has to stop. But thanks to the dedicated humanitarian champions at the Doritos Corporation, there might be an end to this evil scourge of humanity. This week, Doritos unveiled their latest invention, Crunch cancellation software (laughs) you guys remember when people tried to sell us chips by saying chips were tasty do you remember that no (laughs) eli no i don't i grew up in an era where we were sold chips because they'd drive a cartoon cheetah into self-destructive frenzy i don't know i feel like this is better we're going the right way no i like that cheetah the chips were tasty it worked i did want those so here's why american capitalism is perfect Exactly as it is. This is an (laughs) elegant, (laughs) elegant solution that's happening. In partnership with Smooth Technology, Doritos created the world's first ever crunch cancellation software called Doritos Silent. It uses highly advanced AI to identify and eradicate the sound of crunchy chewing from phone calls, online voice chats, and of course, gamer comms. 
In order to create the anti-crunching engine, they recorded 500 people eating Doritos and identified approximately 5,000 different crunch noises. Then they mixed the crunching noises with people talking and they honed the software until it could separate the two. And before you raise an objection, the lead developer wants us all to know that yes, the AI is trained exclusively on Doritos crunching, but it does work on a wide swath of the crunch family, including other chips, other brands, crackers also, and certain raw vegetables. Okay, look, I hate that Luddite, shouldn't they be curing cancer catch all too? But they could be doing literally anything but this, and it would be a better use of their time. No, no just speaking on behalf of everybody who's ever edited your raw audio bullshit, dude. <laughs> Thank you. This, this technology is going to save Morgan 400 hours a year. Just, <laughs> you just took more. away my peanuts. You took away my soup. <laughs> I have nothing. So Doritos was very keen to mention that the inspiration for the project is based on real science and hard data, Eli. Doritos did a survey <laughs> across China, India, Portugal, England, and the U.S., and they found that the vast majority of gamers like to snack while they're playing with chips being a very popular option. They also found that the noise of chip eating is the most bothersome. According to Chief Marketing Officer of International Foods at PepsiCo, the parent company of Doritos, quote, Crunch is one of the most distracting features that could throw someone off their game. You're just bad and, at well, video games. Stop inventing technologies. Don't invent a technology for this. <laughs> okay, so it, it really actually kind of bothers me given their prevalence in every online gaming community I've ever experienced that 11-year-olds who just learned a new slur didn't top that most bothersome list, right? Would have loved like, for that to be the top. Like crunching yeah. and then that, like, make a technology that cancels that shit out and maybe I'll do online gaming again. <laughs> So, given the hard science about crunch, Doritos was faced with a dilemma, especially given the inherent desirability of crunch per se in a snack food. According to their in-house research team, people crave crunchy foods because they're more stimulating to eat than softer foods, and that was especially true among gamers. Doritos identified this timeless conflict between the culinary desire for crunch and the auditory desire for a crunchless environment, and they labeled that a major, quote, pain point I just, for their company. I just wanted to live in a society <laughs> so have a mailbox. In their first foray into the issue, this pain point issue, somebody came up with the idea for a flaccid, crunchless Dorito. And apparently their company is full of crazy people, so they rolled with it for a mm -hmm. little bit. They loved the idea, but somebody pointed out that the one thing missing, of course, was misogyny. So Doritos announced they'd be developing a chip for women. Seriously, they did that. It was meant to be low crunch because, you know, women shan't be making noise. And they also <laughs> planned for a reduction in finger dust, which of course can be extremely dangerous to women and their ill-protected, vulnerable lady hands. That campaign announcement went very badly, which, which is good, and they moved on, and they finally landed on the software instead. So here we are. We made it. I'm unstuck in time. It's okay. I'm back. I'm back. <laughs> so, I love that their press release on this basically included an aside where they were like, yeah, no, we thought of wet Dorito, but that doesn't work. So we <laughs> Before you even know, ask, considered that. We tried Doritos. People were weird about our wet Man. Dorito <laughs> idea. And in Fact Lives Matters news, as our nation's pollsters realize they're about as useful as balls on a goose, and as television news desperately tries to inject some tension into a political race with an outcome only slightly less certain than whether or not The Undertaker will win WrestleMania, one question has been on a lot of people's minds. What is Donald Trump's strategy? How is he going to snatch victory from the jaws of defeat? Well, this week, the answer seems to be accepting an endorsement from the Crystal Pepsi of Black Lives Matter <laughs> in a play that seems to be aimed at nobody. It's, it's not clear. I think it's to win a fight he's having against him, maybe, because most of his political career is basically just Ed Norton punching himself in the face, yeah, right? That's exactly. how it works for him. Yeah. So uh, During American History X. Yeah, I mean, um, that's the movie, yeah. The endorsement in question comes from Mark Fisher, the founder of BLM Inc., a website and organizing group that both it and Black Lives Matter made clear is not associated with the nationwide Black Lives Matter movement in any way. 
but it does have the letters BLM in the title. Mm -hmm. That's right, everybody. Donald Trump got his endorsement from the Black Lives Matter version of a patent troll. (laughs) Or, as the official Black Lives Matter account put it, quote, Anyone can start an organization and add the words Black Lives Matter to it in an attempt to muddy the waters of our movement as Mark Fisher did. His organization is illegitimate and not in any way connected to the righteous BLM community fighting to protect and save black lives. Continuing to call Mark Fisher a Black Lives Matter leader is disingenuous and inappropriate. End yeah, quote. He, he said in a fucking article that called Mark Fisher a Black Lives Matter leader. I feel like we're inches away from Trump just starting a thing called the Nobel Prize so that he can give some to himself. (laughs) Exactly. And since disingenuous and inappropriate are pretty much the same Candyman in a mirror of Donald Trump's political career, he has missed no opportunity to say he's now endorsed by BLM and to repeat his claim that he's done more for black people than any other president. Okay. Obviously absurd. But just for some extra context about the Republican Party, the Ron DeSantis campaign team heard about this And they looked at the numbers in their voting base and they put out a statement that basically said, look at this liberal cuck Donald Trump talking about which lives matter. We don't even let people mention that in Florida schools. (laughs) That's right. That's our guy. So, yeah, the GOP ranges from lying about black lives mattering to no, they don't. Yeah, that's the range. (laughs) Right. No, the liability here for Trump isn't that he's lying. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) Yeah, because this, of course, brings us to the question of who is this endorsement for? Right. Trump supporters are unapologetic racist. Trump himself has said that Black Lives Matter hates our country and is a symbol of hate. So who is he appealing to and who does he think is going to be convinced by this? Is he playing a board game with Heath and trying to win a trivia question on a technicality? Does the card in fact say moops? We may never know. But quick reminder, smack talk aside, if you don't vote for Joseph Biden in the upcoming election, we might find out that motivation from behind the desk in the Oval Office. Yeah. Actually, but as you were saying that, I feel I feel like I finally figured it out, right? So he's convinced his base that BLM is a hate group, and his voters want him to have the endorsement of all the hate groups. I think I feel oh, it's like, like this a is bingo to make all sense. square that situation. Does sure. track. And finally tonight, in trans fats news. In the face of a problem as Herculean as climate change, pretty much no step towards a solution seems particularly significant, right? Kind of like how no individual bucket of water probably seems all that significant when the boat's sinking. So it'll be easy to dismiss this story as a trivial publicity stunt because, well, because in all likelihood that's what it is, but it's still a major step that has meaningful potential in marriage discussion. So... With the premise of the story sufficiently undercut, I can get to the point. Virgin Atlantic made history last week when it flew a commercial airplane from London to New York using a fuel made entirely of sugar and fat. Okay. I'm a little skeptical, though. Like, I should be able to fly then, right? Like, I've had sticks of butter dipped in cocoa powder so many times, just loose, eating them like an apple. At the, I should be able to hover a little bit at minimum. Yeah. I mean, to be fair, at this point, if they jammed you into the fuel tank of an airplane, it's way more spacious than the seats on United. Yeah, so. yeah. So, yeah, so th- this is a story about sustainable airline fuel, or SAF, It's a lower emission alternative to carbon-based jet fuel that could have easily been dismissed as mostly fictional before this test flight. Uh, Now, as you may have guessed, sustainable airline fuel is a category more than a distinct thing. It can be made from corn, animal fat, algae, trash, sewage, all kinds of stuff. Uh, But to qualify as SAF by federal guidelines, it has to emit at least 50% less carbon than petroleum-based fuels, and it has to come from a sustainable source. Or I guess a theoretically sustainable source, at least. And it's already in use in the airline industry, though until now it's strictly been used as an additive in traditional fuels, and it only makes up about 0.1% of the fuel used in aviation at the moment. Okay. I feel like they should focus on the sewage type. There's a scenario where an airplane goes empty by accident, and Eli's like, step aside, I got this. (laughs) (laughs) He does like the Superman chest reveal, but, you know, pants instead of the (laughs) chest. I mean, I've done that, but I always get tackled by an air marshal so i love this idea yeah it's great (laughs) now to be clear virgin atlantic's flight was a one-off they're not like 
like opening a new transatlantic sustainable fuel only route or anything, despite being cleaner for the environment, current SAF fuels are way dirtier for engines, I guess. And without some serious redesigns, they wouldn't be able to handle repeated SAF flights, the redesigns of the engine or the, or of the fuel. Um, plus we're manufacturing way too little SAF to support something like that. Plus it's still like three times as expensive as the kill the great grandkids fuel. And nobody's lining up for more expensive airline tickets unless the alternative is flying Southwest. But the fact that we can get a plane from one continent to another using this shit right now is a pretty significant step in the right direction. Yeah. I cannot wait for this stuff to become more common. Thanks to the hard work of thousands of scientists only to be thrown into the face of said scientists that climate change wasn't real in the first place. Right. Yeah. Beautiful it's not, yeah. Cycle it is. Now, of course, I should at least acknowledge that the current materials favored for SAF come with their own problems, right? Like, I feel like the vegan on the show might have something to say about replacing jet fuel with the gleaming fat rent from the carcasses of animals. And I feel like people <laughs> concerned people. with global food poverty might take issue with reappropriating a gazillion tons of corn every year to stick into jet engines. Um, I, and we do a hell of a lot more to reduce those emissions from airline traffic by investing in high-speed rail in this country since 91% of flights in America are domestic. Yeah, we already have technology that could get you from L.A. to San Francisco in about one hour. That's the same as the flight time. Yeah. But instead of just doing that as a government project, like China does, we're trying to privatize everything. So we have Elon Musk insisting the whole thing looks like uh, lottery balls and bank <laughs> tubes, whatever the fuck he <laughs> See, recently yes. drew on a napkin. Yeah, Elon, you can call it the X train. You just whatever. <laughs> there you go. Whatever but, fixes the but infrastructure. Regardless of the problems <laughs> that it causes, the difficulties it still faces, and the other solutions it ignores, the fact that we're even having a conversation about this is more than enough justification for Virgin's publicity stunt. Until I started reading up on this story, I had no idea that SAF was a thing, and if you told me about it, I would have assumed that we were years away from actually being able to fly passenger jets with it. The fact is, regardless of how neonatal the concept is, it's there, and at least to this minor degree, it's proven. Pretty good stuff. Yeah. I'm impressed. And on that note, we're going to close it out. Thanks to No Illusions, thanks to Eli Bosnick, and thanks to all the listeners who liked us and followed us on all the various internets. Please keep doing that. Please keep listening, and please keep telling your friends. And if you find the naive stupidity of our giving away a free show business model to be oddly charming, you can send us gifts of money at patreon.com slash skeptocrat. Just like all the new generous donors, you will be complimented next time around. And whether or not you're feeling financially benevolent like those fine people, if you enjoyed our brand of whimsy and you'd like to hear more dick jokes free of charge, check out our brother and sister shows, The Scathing Atheist, God Awful Movies, D&D Minus, twice a month now, and Citation Needed, available in all the podcast places. We just have one last thing. Let's compliment that penis. Special thanks to Ryan Slotnick of Evil Giraffes on Mars. He's the creator of the virtuosic musical stylings you heard today, which were used with permission. You should definitely check him out using the links we'll provide or by Googling the only band called Evil Giraffes on Mars. Until next time, catchphrase sign off. From the people that brought you Jankum. <laughs> The preceding podcast was a production of Puzzle and a Thunderstorm, LLC. Copyright 2023. All rights reserved. Did you know U.S. businesses can lose over 44 million workdays during cold and flu season? Lysol Pro Solutions cold and flu portfolio quickly kills flu, RSV, and COVID-19 viruses when used as directed. Stock up. 